Hi, uh, this is Paul Riddick and I'm a member of the Norfolk City Council uh, representing Ward 4 and I'm seeking re-election on May the 4th to be your councilman for Ward 4 in the city of Norfolk. And I'd like to indulge you for maybe three or four minutes if I could. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done anything on YouTube and I have some very important information for you and I'm going to uh, occasionally look down and refer to some prepared remarks that I have and then we'll talk, um, at least I'll talk with you uh, about some of the things that I say. Uh, as I said, I'm seeking re-election to the Norfolk City Council because I believe that during these challenging times the experience that I have uh, is very important. During these difficult times it's very important that we have someone who has been at the table and who knows what's going on. Now it's very difficult not to take into consideration what's happening statewide and in our country and how they impact us. These budgets and these budget shortfalls have impacted us tremendously. Well, I've seen these times before. When I became a member of council, Norfolk was faced with similar impediments. At that time they were called unfunded mandates. These are mandates made by the federal and state governments with no funding to uh, accommodate them. In addition to that, we had an overcrowded city jail and because of state mandates we had to build a new city jail. We had 17 acres of land that we wanted to make a regional shopping center with no developer and no money to finance, finance it actually. And uh, in addition to that we had uh, a permanent infrastructure and we had a school division that had all sorts of facility needs and we did it we were able to meet those challenges with just sheer determination. Not with a lot of state money or federal money, but sheer determination. And uh, we've never uh, and have to uh, do some of the things that we're doing now. Now all of the things that we did, uh, I believe that I was an integral part of these successes. Now first of all, uh, I insisted that our administration create a rainy day fund and we have a rainy day fund and in spite of all of the challenges that we've had we've never had to use it even last year we've never had to use it and uh... I'm, we found a developer for MacArthur Center to Taubman's and while I'm extremely disappointed with the uh, lack of union labor or not as much union labor as I would like to have seen and the lack of minor minority participation we still got the job done in addition to that we built four brand new schools with a fifth one coming on soon and uh, we built four brand new athletic fields for the school district without taking one penny from their operating budget. We gave Nauticus a more stable footing with the uh, it, with the creation and the building of a half moon cruise terminal and we have been able to do things with just sheer determination to make Norfolk a more livable city for all residents. What are we faced with in 2011? First, of all, first and foremost is funding of our public education. It is very important that we fully fund public education. The state and federal government has sort of turned their backs on us, but it's up to us to see what we can do to come close to closing those gaps. We must create students who can work in all areas of the marketplace and if we want to create students that are going to or should I say develop students who are going to be able to work in a global society then we must fund public education and we must make our students able to work all over the world and make them proud to say that I'm a product of the Norfolk Public School District we've done it before and we can do it again we must fund public safety and get the best and most educated police officers that we can find. Now I've seen an improvement in our police officers but I believe that the more educated our officers are the more beneficial they will be to our entire community. So we must assist our officers in uh, education, either paying them, uh, reimbursement, tuition, uh, just doing whatever we can do to make the best officer that we can have. Uh, our city jail is overcrowded again as most city jails are throughout the country there must be an alternative to incarceration and, and we have to find it. 
we can't leave our senior citizens uh, falling prey to the ruthless element that we have out there. We have to protect our senior citizens. We have to we have to give our employees a livable wage, a wage that they can raise families on, and once again send their children to college. We also have to take care of entire our retirees. Uh, it is our moral responsibility to look out for the men and women whose backs this city was built on. We cannot let them fend for themselves. Uh, as we move forward uh, with our construction of our court complex, the completion of light rail, of our libraries and new schools, minority contractors, African American contractors I must say, have to be a part of those persons who are making money. We have to create new wealth. We just cannot continue to let those uh, companies who have gotten uh, rich because of favoritism. We have to make sure that African American men and women become a part of the success that we've been enjoying in the city of Norfolk. And I'd like to close by saying that in spite of all that we must do and what we want to do, we must uh, maintain a responsible bond rating. Uh, we must create uh, a larger fund balance. And our fund balance is sort of like a savings account, which you, you have at home. Right now, our fund balance is uh, about 5% of our uh, real estate tax assessments. Uh, I believe it needs to be about seven and a half percent. This way our bond ratings, our bond rating agencies will take us seriously and when we go to the bond market we can get uh, a better rate. And uh, Norfolk is not going to be in the situation that it is now. I don't believe that the country is going to be or the state is going to be. But we must be prepared to move forward as far as the future of Norfolk is concerned. And when things begin to brighten up for the federal and state government and the funds are a little bit more um, sharing, should I say, the local government, then Norfolk has to be ready to move forward. I don't think that uh, things are as bad as sometimes you might see in the newspaper. And certainly, I'm not to, trying to paint a picture of gloom and doom. We have a lot of things to do in Norfolk, but I really believe with a strong city council with experience that we can accomplish those things. Thank you very much for your time.